Hi everyone, this is Matt from DrawingTutorialsOnline.com. How are you guys doing out there? Hey Anne, Sherry, welcome. Anne, how are you? Sandy, you made it on time this week, awesome. Get my head out of the uh, screen there. It's so tricky not to, I always have to remember my, remind myself not to do that. Aura, welcome, um, thank you for joining us again here on this Saturday. Uh, Jill, how are you? Sabi F? Okay, Nancy, welcome, and Ileana. Ileana, again, uh, you did a great job with the image that you posted. I, I love what you did, uh, posting it to the Critique Gallery, and you're getting better and better. Hopefully the light thing helped you. It's, it's evening for you, Anne. Okay, interesting. Frankie J, welcome. Joseph, welcome. Oh, all right, so as people start to trickle in, it's a holiday weekend here in the United States. It's the Labor Day weekend. Michael, welcome. Uh, what we're going to talk about is a little bit of still life composition. So what you see here is uh, Phoenix, welcome. Uh, you know, sometimes with the live stream, you know, by Friday night, I, I, I'm, I like working Monday through Saturday and Saturday being like a half day. I, I really like that schedule. And Sunday, uh, Camilla, welcome. I, I like not to work on Sunday, Ling Yu. And uh, so sometimes Friday night, I'll go out to dinner with my wife and I'm like, what am I going to draw tomorrow? Because <laughs> you know, I'm doing my thing during the week and I should plan a little bit more for the live stream because it, it is an important part of my weekly routine, but I, I, you know, I, I kind of sometimes thrive off of the spontaneity and somebody last week asked me, could you please do something still life related? And I'm like, okay, that's a good idea. I haven't really done anything still life related. Still lives are not my favorite thing, but I, I like them. I don't dislike them. Uh, and so I went on Google this morning and I'm like, I, I never get pictures from Google, but for a still life, I'm like, okay, I don't have a problem with that. So I just typed in royalty free still life image. And I found this one, which is absolutely beautiful. And the link to this image is in the description in the video below. So the purpose of today's live stream is just to talk to you about, uh, we're going to have our one, uh, bigger drawing right over here. And then I want to have a couple of thumbnail sketches before we start that piece. Because, you know, this uh, image here is absolutely beautiful. This photograph with the, I guess it's orange juice or tangerine juice. Uh, it's actually really such a beautiful photo. But what if, you know, you had this photo and you didn't necessarily like that you uh, single player welcome Rendy Knight. Wow, that's a name and a half. Ash, welcome. What what if you didn't like it so um, dark in the background? Although I I, I think it's like a, a perfect uh, photo, very symmetrical, very beautiful, a limited palette with the orange color, uh, orange and some pinks in there. It's just really, really lovely. But what if you wanted to do something different and you weren't sure? So uh, you had this picture and you're like, okay, this is the photographer's vision. And I, I, I connected with this photo immediately, uh, made by Dawn Good Morning, and that's the reason why we choose photos to draw from, uh, especially in the in the coronavirus situation. I hate to even utter that term, but we a lot. I. I I'm unable to go to a live drawing class because there are no live drawing classes for me to teach. It's all online now, at least this semester. Uh, I don't have a model to my studio. Sure, I can set up a still life, but uh, and and that's a great way to practice drawing from life. But I'm like, you know what? I I, I need a photo. You need a photo quick. You go to Google, you, Google, not Google, Google, <laughs> and you connect to a photo. But you want to make it your own, and maybe you don't want to have the photo so perfectly centered. You want to bring a little motion into it. So last week we did motion in landscape. And this week, what I like to do uh, is to talk about motion and compositional elements with a still life. Okay. Um, Kushi. Wow. I love that name from India. Welcome. All right, let's get started here. So this uh, little thumbnail sketch, a lot of people don't like to do thumbnail sketches. Uh, John, welcome, because they feel as though it, it breaks their momentum. A lot of people just want to dive into painting on the canvas. A lot of people just want to start drawing. But I really highly recommend that you get into the habit of uh, doing some thumbnail sketches. And these thumbnail sketches, okay, here's my thumb 
and bigger than my thumbnail, but it's just the idea that it's the tip of your thumb type thing, and you're just going to draw it really, really quickly. So these are uh, about an inch and five eighths by um, an inch and an eighth wide. Okay, I'm not being exact with it. I just really free handed it. Christine from Boston. Uh, again, I I apologize for. I don't know if you're into hockey or not. You're probably not, but I apologize for the Boston Bruins, uh, my most hated team in hockey. Uh, because Zdeno Chara is so good, and he punches everybody in the head after the whistle blows, but I digress. All right. Um, yeah, it's, uh, so that, that I, I, you know, I just Googled that this morning, so I, I, I don't like um, taking other people's copyright away. Like, I, I don't agree with any of that at all. So I type in royalty-free, and these photographers have uploaded their uh, pictures to this website for you to use. So just to kind of spread their name a little bit. So it's a, it's a cool website. I, I, I don't use it much, but I found it and I would use it again, no doubt. Let's get started. So we have this beautiful um, still life, the photo that you see right next to my face over there. Now, let, let's just kind of play for a little bit. So we have this big, beautiful... Um, glass jar okay so what am i doing right now uh i am just kind of doing a quick value study a compositional study three different ones to figure out which way i'm going to take this drawing okay i really really recommend that you do this okay uh, oh god okay yeah i hate uh welcome shannon I, I hate hurricanes. Uh, the wind is just, I can deal with the rain, but the wind is scary. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to place that big jar, okay? And I kind of like the flowers right over there. I'm going to group them. I know this is really tiny, but I'm going to draw bigger and just give me like five minutes to set this up. Uh, and then perhaps I'm going to do, I, I, is this an orange or a tangerine? That's going to be the question of the day. Let's just call it an orange, Okay. Um, maybe there's the orange slice over here, and then there's another orange slice right over there, and we're going to put the orange. You know what? I, I, I don't like that. I'm not giving myself enough room. So what I want to do with this particular composition is I want to create this motion of that S-curve. And hey, Craig, uh, welcome. And how I'm going to do this S-curve is I'm going to do it with tone. So I'm going to say, all right, right over here, I'm, just, I'm not going to copy the picture. I'm going to put a little bit of tone right over there, and I'm going to put tone on this side only, okay? And I'm not going to incorporate the full orange. So this might be an option for my composition. Uh, now, the paper that I'm using today is the, let me just sh share this with you very quickly here, uh, just because I wanted to use the white charcoal. It's the Stonehenge by Legion uh, papers, and it's the Stonehenge colors. And Craig uh, suggested this one to me. And uh, so there's all different colors in there of uh, off-whites. And uh, the only reason why I'm using this is because I, I want to uh, use it uh, with the white colorase. No, I'm sorry, the white charcoal, not the white colorase. White colorase is just horrendous. So getting back to the composition here, I'm going to just put in a value. And that's going to be a middle tone. I'm going to put in a little value. Now with these thumbnails, I'm just doing an up and down pencil stroke. Uh, nothing crazy. And uh, which way is the light coming from? So the light's coming from the left. And I'm going to say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to do a lighter value on the glass jar. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to do darker over here. Okay. And I just want to have a little bit of dark in the glass, some reflections. Again, this is not for detail. Detail, this is just to kind of frame things out. Now, I think I'm going to do the, remember, three values in every drawing. Okay. I got H from the Ukraine. Thank you for joining from the Ukraine. Love it. And that's going to be my dark. So that, that's very, very, very different than the photo. Again, I'm just trying to give myself options for what I think I might want to do differently, perhaps, with the composition. I, I kind of like that. that. That's really interesting. Okay, and I have three values. Okay, I have a gradation. I like the way that the objects are placed, albeit it's very rough. Now, uh, let's do something different. So let's 
again, um, this time, let's move the glass jar to the right so it's not perfectly symmetrical. Okay, so this, if a uh, center line is the way that I like to compose, so here's our center line. So that is extremely centered. Simone from Italy, my mother was born in Italy in a little small town, four hours south of Rome. Sanicandro di Bari, and I, uh, sorry for the bad Italian pronunciation. And yes, so use the center line, okay? And here's the central line on this next thumbnail sketch. And I don't want it balanced. I want it off balance. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do the same thing with uh, the motion because I love S-curves and S-curves are really, really cool. Like an Italian sports car, the Ferrari has S-curves. And uh, yes, from um, what town in Italy are you from, Simone? Greco. That was my friend's name from high school. Hope, hopefully I'm saying that, Ruka, from India. Um, let's do the flowers. Let's do the orange slices here. Overlap is a very important thing with a still life. So maybe I'm going to do something like that. Now I'm putting in my glass jar, and I'm going to go darker this time with this side of the glass jar. I, I, I want to change things up even more. And I'm going to go really dark with the glass jar. I'm going to go dark with the bottom of the flowers. Those flowers are fabric, by the way. They're really decorative. And a little dark over here. And now I'm not going to go so crazy with the background tone. I'm going to keep the background tone uh, middle tone, light middle tone. Okay. And I'm going to go light middle tone. And I'm going to put it on the entire table. Sonny Condo, it's really near to my city. I'm from Bari. Yeah, I remember when I was a little kid, I visited there, and I was in sixth grade, and of course, Italy didn't have regular milk at the time. It had goat's milk, fresh goat's milk. It didn't just have chocolate ice cream, but it had to have the ice cream with the dried fruits. So I basically think I, I was a young American kid, very ignorant, and uh, I didn't eat anything the entire week. The only thing I ate was like plain pasta. And all the food there was so good. I didn't know what, <laughs> I didn't know anything. So I, yeah, I'd love to go back there now because now I love all food. And um, yeah, my grandfather, uh, yeah, it was so much history. So this one's a little different. I made it off center. Okay, let me focus here on what I'm doing I, so I don't get too much into the stories. But yeah, body, I was there once and I ate at this restaurant um, right on the water. I just remember being there with my grandfather. It was very, very long time ago. We're talking the 70s. So that one's okay. I don't hate it. And uh, let's leave it. Let's leave it because sometimes the benefit of, um, ah, from Russia, there is this Russian landscape painter who I would love to meet. His name is Timo Shenko, T I M O S H E N K O on Instagram. Oh my God, this guy is a genius. I love his work. Really, really beautiful. Now, so we're, so we're kind of all the countries here today, Italy, Russia, India, Ukraine, my God, Paris, Jean Philippe, welcome. Craig from Southampton um, in, in the UK. Uh, now let, let's do something completely different. So let's go back and we, we don't need to do a centered composition, but let's just analyze the, the composition that we have. So the composition that we have is this centered, okay, Shannon from America. Uh, it does have the best ice cream, but I was a fool. It just it seemed like everything had like dried nuts. Turkey, welcome. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we're really representing all the countries here today. So I, I love the composition because we have the orange on the right, the flowers overlapping on the left, and then we just have the orange slices. So what we're getting here, if I could ruin this little thumbnail, is we're getting this round motion back and forth like that. And the composition that we have is very, very, very triangular. I know I just ruined that like little, um, oh, okay, why am I saying Southampton? Maybe because we were talking about Southampton. Suffolk, my bad. 
Thank you, Bharat. I hope I said that. Celine, Canada, of course. Canada always has to represent. Uh, now, so do you guys see what I'm doing here with this triangle? That's pretty much, for me, what the composition is. So if you try to analyze it, uh, what we have in that photo, and again, I have a link to the photo in the description in the video below. It's really, the way the objects are placed, it's very triangular. I don't know all, you know, I went to art school for four years when I was young, and I still don't know all the correct art terms. I kind of give everything my own art terms, and... Uh, yeah, I'm really bad. I, I just wasn't paying attention in art history. Um, Brazil. So that's kind of what I envision, and that is very, very centered. And it's very, very two-value-ish. So the background is really, really, really dark. The jar with the orange juice is very light with middle tone over here. Let's go even darker still. Hopefully my head's not in there. Okay, good. So now that we've kind of, um, we have some reflections down over here, which is really good. Uh, so I, I'm just kind of going fast here with these thumbnails, and, and this is what you have to do as well. And I, and I know that's kind of really ugly, so let me just frame out the jar so you can actually see what I'm doing with the orange. Frame it out, press down a little bit harder, press down hard on this paper, and then the orange slices. So again, that composition is very triangular. Now, I, I love the triangular composition. It's very grounded. It has a wide base, okay? It's just, it's wrapping us around on the top over there. It's really the perfect photo, in my opinion. It's got all different textures. It has overlap. Uh, it's great. And it has what's most important, light and shade, because light and shade rules, in, in my opinion. And, and it's very, very important for you to incorporate light and shade in everything that you do. But I kind of like this composition. Yeah, draw, uh, values are everything. So let, let's say, let, let's do this down over here. Let me utilize every little square inch of my paper. So let's say we're doing a value. Let, let's say we're going to do a thumbnail sketch of the composition again. Okay. And we draw our little composition or rectangle. Now you can fit it within a framed rectangle or a square or a horizontal rectangle, or you can just start to draw and draw the frame after. Uh, I like doing both, and, and sometimes I like to draw the frame first. In this particular case, because we're talking about composition, uh, I think it's really important to draw the frame first because that's the space that we're composing in. Now, if we just do the image, the thumbnail, with line, so we have our flowers, we have our orange, they're very balanced, and we have our orange slices, um, now you tell me, we're just doing this in line. Okay, let's do a little bit more detail so we're fair. Okay, some detail in the flowers, some detail with the orange, some detail with the orange slices. Now, out of all of the marks, because drawing is just making marks on paper, Uh, I'm really practicing contour line right now. How would you apply that to thumbnailing without really shading? Uh, kind of what I just did right over here, but I, but what I would do, let me just resharpen this. What I would do is, sorry for the sound effects, is I would make the contour of the objects that I'm drawing, uh, to use some Spanish lingo, mucho importante, okay? Uh, for me, with the line, and the contour, it's, it's truly what's going to make the drawing interesting is the complicated edge, which is going to be extremely different than the tone. Now, tone will always uh, trump line just because it's more valuable shape. Uh, if you uh, compose your imagery with three values, and let's really use all the space. So we have a dark, we have a middle tone, and let's use a light, and we have a light, that's always gonna trump line. Now, you could definitely use dark line, and you can mix up your line variety. I teach a line class 
at the School of Visual Arts, and it's the students' favorite class, and they learn so much when I teach the line class. But one way to do a contour drawing of the still life is to describe what you are drawing with detailed line. And each object is going to have a different edge to its line. Very important, okay? And I could, I could make this pop out. It's already popping out because I'm using a dark, thick line right over there. And we can do a dark, thick line uh, wherever you want the view to look. I could do some line instead of shading. And the line represents tone, okay? and line within the glass jar so that I tried to really on purpose use just line now remember you, you don't want it so this outline of the frame is one line value what is its value where's my value scale its value is super light it's this value this line so when you do a contour line drawing for your still life, you got to use a dark and you have to use a middle tone and you have to use a light, okay? Don't just use one line value. So we've so what have we done so far on this live stream? We're 20 minutes in. We've talked about this very very beautiful photograph and what we said was uh, sure, you can copy this and you can draw it. It's a royalty-free image and it's absolutely beautiful. And you can just copy all the values and you can use it for practice and, and draw it accurately and just having fun. Or before you get started, you can start to think about making it your own. And the way that you make it your own is you practice doing some thumbnail sketches. Okay, and these thumbnail sketches should take you less than five minutes each, four to five minutes. And you could do them in a frame, and you want to use a center line to help you to compose. Now, we're doing a live stream here, and I could talk about a gazillion things with composition. There's so many things to talk about. I'm trying to kind of keep it simple right now, okay? Uh, and I'm just trying to give you some things to kind of cling on to. So the center line is one thing for you to cling on to. Uh, three values is another thing. I, I like to talk about the same thing over and over again because these are the very simple things that a lot of people don't do because they forget. And you go online, you go on Instagram, you go on YouTube, and you see all of these incredibly talented people. And you don't when you look at their work, you're looking at texture, you're looking at color, you're looking at action, whatever the artist is doing. You're not necessarily studying three values because that's boring. You're not necessarily studying the center line because that's boring. But these are how you confront a blank white sheet of paper. These are very simple tools that you can use that will help you all the time. Okay. Welcome from India. Um, there were these guys, I, I have really a messed up neck. I have some herniated discs in my neck and it causes me to have all these weird sensations in my hand. And there was this person from India. I wish they were, I wish they put like a translation at the bottom because they were doing these neck exercises and they seemed so cool. It was like nerve flossing. I just couldn't, I couldn't understand what they were saying, but it was, it was an awesome video. Um, so center line, three values. Now in this particular case, we're working with flow. No, not Flo, the girl from the progressive commercials, but Flo, the movement with tone. And then here now, there's a thing that I love to teach in my classes and on my website, drawingtutorialsonline.com, is a compositional shape. And a compositional shape, simply put, is a shape of value that goes behind the object that you are drawing. So I'm putting a compositional shape behind the glass jar, the flowers, and the orange uh, peel section. Not, they're not peeled, they're just orange slices. Okay, so center line, flow, compositional shape, three values, light and shade. Those are some really, really simple, simple things um, that you could use in a thumbnail sketch. And it's just something you, you need to do. And we talked about this over and over again with portraits, uh, all of the students that I have for the coaching, as well as students on the website who get their work critiqued, I say, listen, before you dive in and do a portrait, take 
five minutes. Now, we did three of these, and we're about 25 minutes into the live stream. We did three of these, and so, okay, 15 minutes to do a quick, quick, like, little um, thumbnail sketch just to arrange, like, value structure before you dive into the final drawing. Now, let's get started with laying this out. I don't know what I'm going to do with this piece here today. So I, pu I put my frame down, and this is really good practice for drawing straight lines. So practice going straight across, practice going straight up and down without a ruler. It's really good practice straight across. This is the hardest thing to do straight across. Now, uh, this photo on the website is extremely rectangular, very tall rectangle. I cropped it for the live stream to just make it a little bit uh, less tall so I have more paper to draw on. So what I'm going to do here is just very lightly. So when I, I don't know where I'm, where I'm going with this piece here today. I, I, I might do a little bit of tone, more line. So just map out. I, I, I'm going to center the jar. I, I, I love symmetry in certain things. I also like things off balance as well, but I, I, I like off balance for landscape. But for a still life, I love the quiet feeling of something that's very symmetrical. Now that's much wider than that glass jar. So I'm, I'm pressing down so light on my pencil as I start this still life drawing, okay? Very light, because I can turn that mistake into tone. It's not a mistake, actually, it's just a block in. So I, I'm just feeling this out. Um, orange. I want to leave some space for it. So perhaps this, and uh, we didn't talk about tangents. Now let's do the orange slice overlap. You need in your still lifes, you have to have overlap. Okay, so that's going to come on down. I don't want to have that orange slice too big in comparison. To, I need to have it in proportion to the actual orange. I don't know if it's a tangerine. I'm not really a fruit person nor a vegetable person. Uh, I'm more of a bakery goods person. So I, you know what? I, I love the, the orange slices in the photo, but I think I'm just going to do one for now for the sake of simplicity. And now I'm going to just block in the um, flower. So again, I, I, want, I, I love how the photographer used the flowers to overlap. And I, I want to have different heights. So I'm going to make the orange taller than the flowers. Complicated edge and some perspective. I could turn that into one flower. But since we are going to use one orange peel, let's do two flowers. Clementine, Celine, your genius is what I need. Okay, I need your genius. A Clementine. And is this the Clementine flower? Question. Sometimes I feel like I'm a country bumpkin. Which, yeah, I don't leave my house much lately, so I guess I am. <laughs> um, okay, so... Let's put some details on the glass jar. So we're going to curve it. We'll talk about perspective in a moment. And the lid. The lid is almost at our horizon line because it's not that curvy. But the bottom of the glass jar is very curvy. So it's further away from our horizon line. Mandarin, Clementine. Man, I'm getting an education here this morning. These are really cool terms uh, and words, uh, but I think I might stick with orange because it's simple, but we'll maybe we'll vote at the end. So I'm going to say that almost the top of the jar lid is the horizon line because it's dark, but I'm really having a hard time seeing the top of the lid. And this aspect of the lid is not that curvy at all. Okay, so see, I'm taking my time with this. I'm not um, going too fast. I, I want to get a nice edge. Let's bring it down. Let's be symmetrical. 
I really desperately need to sharpen this pencil, but I'm going to keep it dull at the beginning of the drawing uh, so I can get this soft edge because a sharper pencil is going to make for a harder edge. Padam. I'm going to say Padam. I, I don't know how to say that first name, but it's a really cool one. Sometimes I don't even know how to say my own last name. Okay, so that is our jar. We have our orange. Now, size relationships is something that I talk about all the time with um, figure and portrait. And we want to make sure that, that that orange is or clementine or mandarin is uh, much bigger. We don't want to make it too small because then it will be a tangerine. Let's make that bigger in proportion to the slice. Okay, I'm, I'm cool with that placement. Now let's talk about some things that you have to be careful about as I resharpen. You have to be very careful in any still life that you do that edges don't touch, okay? So you see I have the edge of the orange here and it's really close to the edge of my image. That's gonna start to create tension. Now, yes, Archambault is a French-Canadian name, absolutely. Uh, that's why I like hockey so much. It's, it's in my blood, the Canadian. Now, uh, gosh, it, so listen, whether you believe in prayer or not, I'm a, that's fine, but please, please, a side note, pray for my Islanders tonight. It's game seven. They've got to win. This is my life. I'm going to be watching the hockey game tonight. If they lose, I'm going to be devastated. All right, so please just say a prayer for my Islanders hockey team that they beat the Philadelphia Flyers. All right, so I digress once again. So listen, I, how could we avoid having the edge of the orange creating a tangent, which is tension, when you have two things touch? Like I, I'd never draw my hands touching. I'd never draw this roll of tape with the post-it note touching like that, okay? I'd either overlap or I'd separate the two. So I don't want to have the edge of the orange touching the edge of the frame. So I could lose the edge of the orange with tone with a soft edge, or I could push the orange to the left, which I don't want to do, because then I'm going to create a separate tangent. A tangent, again, is when two things touch, right? And I don't want that. So I'm probably going to lose the edge, or I can widen, widen the, the frame a little bit. But let's just leave it right now. It's not bothering me. Let's just continue. Now, overlap. I desperately need this orange slice. We're just going to stick with orange because it rolls off my tongue. Um, although I love clementine. That's a really nice word. Reminds me of like the 1940s. Um, so we have our orange slice, which is cool, which is overlapping the glass jar. And we have space now in between um, our glass jar and the orange. And now we have our flowers with a really being overlapped by the orange peel slice, not peel mat, wake up. And we're going to make the flowers lower than the orange itself for visual uh, variety. We don't want everything at the same height. Okay, this is placement 101. And we're going to put that other orange. So we have a little bit of perspective. So that's, that's our layout. I'm, I'm cool with it. Perhaps we can make this a little bit wider. Now, let's talk about texture. So let's do a little bit of texture. Let, let's, what's the table made out of? Okay, because the, the, it's on something. We could do the traditional wood grain, old masters type thing over here. But let's just suggest right now and let's keep moving. Let's not get bogged down. And let's draw a little highlight over here. Okay, let's, let's block in a light value. Because we're gonna go, remember, we're going with this one, okay? 
So I'm going to get rid of those texture marks because that, that's going to create like cross hatching. And I, I, I don't think I want to do that. I want this to be a quick live stream still life. And I don't want to get too much into the bogging down of texture. So the quickest way to block in tone is to block in tone on a vertical or a diagonal. So I'm using a vertical to start out with over here. I'm going to do my vertical. Now, I, I've got a lot of negative space. Do I want to be shading all of this? Not really. Do I like that negative space? I do. But I'm going to just... So now this is the beauty of drawing a still life. Uh, Varlamov. Yes, he better. He better. A little bit of knowledge how to achieve the roundness in the drawing. I'll, I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. Let's just keep with the composition right now. Um, so I'm going to up, get rid of some dead negative space. Okay, negative space is the air around the still life objects. Okay, so I'm going to lift up and I'm going to pull down. Sorry for my hand being in the, in the frame. So that just got rid of some negative space, but I, I don't want to crop it in too tight. So this is the beauty of drawing lightly. You can do all of this adjustment with ease, and then we can just erase out. Okay, now let's get back to the tone. Long pencil strokes, because I, I, I don't want to create too much texture back over there with my pencil stroke, and, and I want this to be soft. I already like that. So we have our tone, which is suggested. We can keep the tone very middle tone. It doesn't need to be crazy dark like we have in our thumbnail. We can do a mixture of a line and tone drawing. It doesn't need to be all tone. You know, everyone has their rules. I have my rules, things that I like to do, things that I believe in, but I, at this point in my career, I, I've thrown a lot of the rules out and I just like to do what I like to do, okay? So here's a rule for you that some people are like in the academy atelier space believe that there's no such thing as line, that everything is a tone next to a tone. And that's cool. I'm not, I don't disagree with that, but for the sake of how I like to draw, I like to do line and tone. And I feel as though that my drawings get the best results when I do that. So I'm going to do a soft tone in the background. Okay. And I'm going to do a little bit more with line. And you'll see. And the line's going to be my, my third value. Chuck. Oh, my God, Chuck. I can't cheer for the Leafs after what Tavares did. My goodness gracious. Um, he didn't even tell the Islanders... So the Islanders got nothing. I, I got to stop talking hockey because I know there's a lot of art people who don't like sports. But he left the Islanders. I mean, yeah, they did save money with their cap space. But yeah, I, okay. So I got to stop talking hockey. So we have that soft tone. We'll put a little texture in. So right now our drawing is uh, Chuck the Leafs. Oh, God. I used to go to Toronto every year to visit family. And used to go to Maple Leaf Gardens, and my family there uh, was just so uh, good to me. They used to buy me like a hockey jersey from Maple Leaf Garden every single time I would go there. They were really, really nice. Um, all right. So this is... Uh, I had a professor like that, and he would not let us use line at all. And then my next professor was all about line. So that's the beautiful thing, Kai, about uh, teachers. You know, Paul uh, just recently stopped doing the coaching. And, uh, you know, we were talking on the phone. I'm like, listen, all teachers at some point come to an end and you move on to the next teacher because you're ready to learn something new. And each teacher that teaches on YouTube and in college and in high school, uh, they all have that one thing that is their brand. Uh, for me, my brand is really all about figure drawing, uh, you know, portrait drawing in, in more of a semi-realistic way with line. Uh, other teachers are all about like tone and acad 
academic atelier style drawings. Other teachers are more into vibrant colors. And so it's really important that you get all different teachers and all different points of view. And then you homogenize what you've learned and you kind of do your own thing and you pick and choose what you what you like. It's art. There's no right and there's no wrong. It's really very subjective. Um, hey, Jeff, uh, good to see you. Hope all is well. So, yeah, I, I mean, um, I, the, the funny thing is I've been doing art for so many years that I've gone, you go through phases. I mean, I've been doing art for so many years and there was a time that I believed in there's no such thing as line until I was schooled by Alphonse Maria Mucha with his line and I'm like, okay, this tone next to tone thing does not compete with the line drawings of Alphonse Maria Mucha. You look at the way that he drew uh, silverware, jewelry, the figure, interior spaces, and you look at his line, he got way more dimension with his line than somebody working just with tone could ever get. Um, and once I started to incorporate that sort of line in my artwork, everything changed. And it's, it's, it is for me like a little secret that I'm kind of giving away. Um, it's my little secret, but uh, line really changed my artwork. And if you look at my Instagram page, I do tone and I do line, but the line really, um, yeah, totally changed the look and feel of my artwork. Yeah, you're going to keep uh, growing, Jeff, because you're a type A personality. And uh, yeah. All right, let, let's keep going here. So now I'm going to start to incorporate a little bit of line to frame out the jar. Okay. And a lighter line on that side. Let's just progressively go a little bit darker. Now this part of the jar needs to be the lid. I'm getting uh, a lot of comments here. Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, only pens, wow. Yeah, I mean, college is a great experience. Uh, right now, there's a lot of great online art schools that don't cost nearly as much. But it depends on you, the human being, and where you are in your life. And uh, college might be a good fit because you're young and you want to experience new people and new ideas. But if you're older and you have other responsibilities, well, then maybe an online art school would be better because it's going to be less expensive and the teachers that teach online usually teach at colleges. So you really are getting the same education without the bureaucracy of a big art college because it is a bureaucracy and without the high tuition. And you can learn faster and you don't need to take all those humanity classes if you don't want to. Okay, so this is hard to do fast. I'm going to be honest with you because um, I'm going to cheat with the details here, guys. I'm just kind of putting my own spin. I'm, I'm not going to copy this exactly because of time. I could sit here and really do a good job for you and, and copy and talk about likeness, but let, let's be a little bit more stylized today. Okay, let's just have fun. It's Labor Day weekend here in the United States. It's a gorgeous beautiful Saturday outside. Tomorrow's going to be very pretty as well. And uh, so we're not going to worry too much about copying. I'm just kind of putting my own spin on things. I'm just starting to put a little bit of detail to create some reflections. And I'm going to go a little dark over here. So you can start to see I'm using a little bit of shape. And I, I have no dark. Where's my darkest dark? Right here. That's my darkest dark on the entire piece of paper. So you can see I'm not using darks just yet. I'm saving the darks. Which college courses teach like anatomy and perspective and stuff? Um, that's a tough question for me to answer. Uh, no, SVA did not lower their tuition. They did away with fees. Um, yeah, they did away with fees. And uh, yeah, I just am not happy about teaching via Zoom this semester. But 
Uh, let me just keep my mouth shut because I'm just like a little peon and uh, <laughs> uh, let me keep my opinions to myself. All right, so I'm just really grateful to be teaching in the first place there because it's a great place to teach. I've got a lot of history there. and uh, But yeah, I just... Uh, teaching online via Zoom does not replace working with a model in the classroom. It just does not. That's just a fact. Okay, so yeah, I'm being a little linear here, guys. Um, being outline-ish. Okay. And uh, we have the landscapers outside, so hopefully you can't uh, cross the street. My neighbor, they always come when I do the live stream. It's just part of filming video. And um, just doing a nice complicated edge. Cool. And let's do some petals on the flower. I'm being very linear, very stylized. Not worried about realism right now. Realism uh, comes with value, edges, texture, all those fun things. Yeah, I am so not copying. I'm just making a lot of this up and having fun. Okay, so there's the white aspect of the orange slice. And then the front plane is a different value that's facing us. And I want that to be a little bit like that. Now, I'm, I think I'm going to go uh, darker over here. So again, we're, we're starting off slowly. And I'm, I'm saving the white. I'm going to use white charcoal, but I'm saving it. Now, at this point in the game, you need to lean back. And um, uh, who am I voting for this November? I n okay, so here's my rule. I never, ever talk about politics uh, with art. I think... Um, I like my art class to be completely political free uh, because politics right now is just way, way, way too divisive. And I like to have all of my online classes as well as uh, my own website, drawingtutorialsonline.com, as well as my classroom to be completely politically free because I want it to be a place of learning and I want it to be a place where people can escape uh, from all the crap going on in the world with politics and and just concentrate on art and uh, so that that's always been my rule I've, I've never really stated that rule in in the classroom it's just in my classroom I give out so much information and it's such a pretty fast-paced classroom with the models uh, that I don't even have time for that stuff like I, I'm all about like teaching drawing skills um, life skills for when you graduate from college and you go out into the world and you try to earn a living as, as an artist. Um, yeah, no, I, I so uh, the political thing, I never, ever, ever bring that in, into art, so I'll, I'll leave it there. Uh, so let's, let's just kind of go a little bit more here um, with some details on the inside. Okay, awesome. It's gonna, we're going to need some darks. Cool. So I, what? Okay, so as I'm starting to go here, I'm seeing that I'm going to make the decision of uh, going darker with the actual uh, glass jar. And I'm going to go lighter. So I, I'm not even going to copy my thumbnail. But this kind of gives me... Um, a beautiful option over here with the uh, values. And if you do this value scale up top with your thumbnail, it doesn't mean that you uh, have to um, shade that, right? This way over here. It, it, it's just an option for you to look at. Sometimes the thumbnails are there just for you to look at, right? So you have an option. Uh, it's kind of like a road map, and you look at the road map, and you're like, oh, you know what? I, I don't want to drive through town. I, I want to take the uh, back roads, and I'll save a little bit of time. So it just that little thumbnail in the end, it just saves you time. So let's, let me try to do this horizontal. Good. A little dark on the top. So I'm kind of going dark in the center. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so let, let's keep going here. Now, um, I'm, I'm making stuff up right now, guys. I'm going a little darker with the glass. So let's talk about texture here for a moment. How am I going to make this glass jar shiny versus the flower, which is absorbing light? Okay. And uh, thank you, Dawn. I really do appreciate that. Yeah. I... I uh, don't worry about quote unquote formal art classes. There, are, there's so much informal information on YouTube. Uh, on my, my, I don't consider. Well, I consider my website drawingtutorialsonline.com uh, formal because the courses are uh, structured, uh, and that's the difference between my website and say coming to YouTube on any given Saturday. Uh, where you come on YouTube and, and there's there's so many great teachers like you just get lost and you don't have the structure of a course. Um, so I guess the courses that I have on my site are formal, but it's a very informal way to learn online compared to going to a classroom. So if we're going to use these sorts of terms. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit more middle tone over here. I, I don't want these shapes to be equal. I want them to have variety. And um, let's just put some shape over here. Just having fun with this. Okay, let's wrap around a little bit over here. And let's go really dark with the lid. Uh, I, you know, for me to draw this for you guys here today, this would take me forever. Oh my God. No, I haven't tried that app, Heavy Paint app. It sounds really interesting. Uh, okay, so we have a little bit with the jar. It's not perfect. Let's do some skinny stuff. You know, I was just doing a coaching critique for a gal, um, Tremony, and I was going over her character designs. I'm like, you need some thin stuff, some skinny stuff. So let's put in some skinny stuff. It's really important to have all different types of shapes, wide, skinny, overlapped, cropped, all that stuff. Okay, so that's good for the jar right now as our block in. Uh, we can have a gradation on the jar as well so it can gradate up just for fun. So the bottom is gonna be a little darker so we can pop the top of the orange slice which I'm gonna erase out as well as the floral or the flowers I should say. Okay, so let, let's just kind of do something like that. Now, let's lose an edge on those flowers. Let me resharpen this pencil. Okay, I need to go a little faster. Let, let's do a little bit here with the orange. So we have a center. Let's make this a nice hard edge. Still don't know if I love this placement. Uh, let's do light and shade line that separates I'm going a little bit more round so I need that so the orange is organic the jar is synthetic so we need to make the orange look organic with curvy lines there's no such thing as a straight line on anything that's organic a human being uh, fruit a tree everything has to have a subtle s curve to it and uh, now, if I go dark over here, uh, now that orange is floating. That's no good. That's a no-no. So I'm going to deviate from my composition a little bit here and put a little bit of tone over here. A type A personality is somebody who um, doesn't stop and they become obsessed until they reach their goal. And uh, that's, that's one way of looking at it. That's not the only way. Um, I really do appreciate that, Michael, because there's a lot of great people online. So, Jeff, uh, type A personality. So, gosh, uh, type A personality is somebody who, let, let's just use painting a house for an example. You paint your house outside, and you paint it, and uh, you choose the colors, you... You take all week to paint it, and then you go back, and you touch it up, and you use blue paint, and then you finish, and you're like, oh, it's still not right, and you go back, and you touch up all the edges, and 
Uh, that's type A. Type B is, oh, yeah, I'm painting. That's a good color. I, like, I got that color. It's on sale. And then they paint the house. They don't really care about the choice of color nor the choice of paint. And they don't care if they have a couple of like blurred edges and the paint overlaps. But it still looks good. So type A is just extremely anal. And um, they probably aren't as happy as a type B. But type A is just somebody who um, is obsessed with reaching their goals. And they're really um, crazy and a little bit more fanatical about things. So uh, let, let's talk about what we've got over here. Uh, we have a floating orange. How are we going to integrate? So now I'm going to deviate and I'm going to change my composition. So I'm going to show you the compositional shape. So we have that little rectangle on the, on the right. So my compositional shape is going to be something like this. Hopefully you can see that. So this is the shape behind the glass jar, behind the orange, behind the flowers, and behind the orange slice. That's my shape, okay? A perfectionist. Thank you, Jill. I just used 500 words to explain what a type A personality is when I could have used one word. Um, I am definitely not a wordsmith. Okay, so let's just uh, blend the orange into the environment. You see what I'm doing there? And now I'm going to follow my compositional shape. So I'm deviating from the straight up and down pencil stroke so I can start to do a nice gradation. So I'm going to have a little bit of a hard edge right over here. And let's come on up. So feather away. You don't want your edge up top over here to distract from the jar. So we'll talk about texture in, in a bit. Let's just kind of keep putting down a little bit more tone. A little bit more tone over here. Notice I'm doing all different pencil stroke direction. Okay, a little bit of tone to ground that. Now I'm gonna have, I, I want the bottom of the jar to be a little softer, it's, it's too hard edge. So I'm just gonna put a turn in plain edge in over there. Let's balance left to right and put a little bit of a darker edge or darker value next to the flower so it could have a little bit more contrast and it comes into the foreground just a little bit more. So we're in this about almost like 57 minutes, just about an hour. So let's um, start now to clean things up. Or, yeah, let, let's clean things up. So let's use our kneaded eraser. And I want to clean this area up right over here because I want to where I want to put the white highlight. Let me clean up this side of the orange slice. I still don't like the orange over there to the right. It's kind of not pretty. Something about it feels very detached. Let's just try to give it a ca little bit of a cast shadow and I'm gonna give it a little reflection little tone over here with a turn in plane. So this orange is going to turn under. That will help attach it to the environment. Subsurface scattering. Subsurface scattering. Do you mean reflection on the actual table? You got it. Um, yeah, explain to me Ling Yu, what you mean about subsurface scattering? Do you mean the reflections? Of course, the leaf blower's out. Okay, so I just want a little harder edge with the orange slice. Let's go a little darker over here. Good. Good, good, good.
Awesome. Let's continue with our flow and our movement. Now, uh, could be a little bit more atmospheric. Let's put more value in the glass jar down over here. There's a little too much light of the paper. Light scattering inside the orange, yes. So what I would do with that, so I, I don't think of it that way, although that's really a nice option. I think of it just as a, a, it's a translucent object that has texture and it's a light object. So I, I don't want to go too dark with it. And if I was painting the orange, it actually would be easier than the pencil because I would paint the orange part of the orange with the orange paint in a translucent way. And then I would go on top of that translucent orange paint with a little bit more of opaque white on the edges of the orange. So I would make it translucent as well as opaque. Um, and I could do such a better job with paint than with the pencil there. Uh, so it, for me, it's just about matching values and its texture and trying not to be too heavy with it. Like this over here on the glass jar, this dark that I'm putting is heavy. This on the lid is heavy. So the orange is not heavy, okay? And uh, I want to keep it translucent. So these are just different textures. So how do you get different textures, different texture, different pencil stroke? Okay, let's just have some fun. And for argument's sake, let, let's start with the white charcoal pencil because I don't want to wait forever. I don't want you to have to wait forever to see this um, kind of come to life a little bit quicker. Okay, so definitely, let's see how this works on this paper. Little white charcoal didn't make that much of a difference. Should have cleaned that up with my eraser first, but that's cool. Little white charcoal, where's my big brush? And that jar could be a little rounder. Uh, little white charcoal here. Let's just for fun put some on the other side because there's a secondary light source. Little details. So wait, uh, the background is pitch black at the moment, but you're drawing the picture without the black in the background. N exactly. Because uh, what I talked about at the beginning of the live stream was that we found this picture. It's a gorgeous photograph of a gorgeous still life, and very uh, monochromatically beautiful. But the point of doing the thumbnails here on the top is to say, okay, it's a beautiful picture. I'm connected with it. I love the dark background. It totally works, but I want to make this my own. So I want to do something different with the values, okay? Um, I, I don't want to match that dark background. I could, and I could match the values, and I'd make a pretty pretty drawing, uh, but I, I don't want to do that for the sake of this. I, I want to do something a little bit quicker. I want to make it my own. I don't want to match the values. I want to create movement, and in creating this upward movement like that, I'm going to create a different feeling and a different composition. Now, we're in this an hour, and this if I wanted to match the values and make that dark, I, it literally now goes to a three-hour drawing minimum uh, to put all that value in. And uh, for the live stream, that's just not going to happen. But it could if this wasn't a live stream and I was just hanging out in my studio. So now I'm going to just put a little bit of the white on this. I'm being a little bit of a brute here with this. Now, what's my phrase that I say over and over and over to all the students that I work with? In order to have light, you got to have shadow. So I'm putting the white charcoal in, and you're really probably barely even noticing it because I don't have enough shadow yet. There needs to be, in order to have light, there needs to be dark. I do not have enough dark in this image for these lights to be working. Let's put a little light over here, even if I'm using a toned paper. That's okay. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's always going to look better with the darker background, all dark, uh, because it just does. Like it, it makes it all pop. It's never going to look as good with the with the lighter background. The dark background with the orange glass jar, the orange juice in the glass jar, is just very striking. Okay. Let's come on down. Okay, let, let's just... Um, I, I, I was going to clean up the background a little bit, but I, I kind of like that rough linear texture so I, I could erase all of this over here and i think that'd be something that i would do if this was a final drawing keep your lights light and your darks dark yes um but i i kind of like this weird texture so i'm gonna do a little bit more of it actually it's kind of fun so texture now let's go a little darker over here I don't know what I'm going to do with this side of the glass jar if I'm going to go darker or add a value. So this is the improvisation part of... Uh... Hey, Marie, welcome. Now, this is the improvisation part of drawing. Uh, you could do your thumbnail sketch and commit and say, okay, that's exactly what I want to do, and now I'm going to match that sketch. And I recommend that you do that because that takes a lot of surprises out of it. So today is something different. We're just having fun. It's, it's a short little live stream class. And I, I want to make a little pretty drawing here for you. So I'm just kind of improvising and I'm feeling this out as I go to see. Uh, so I put in the white charcoal and, you know, you're barely even seeing the white charcoal. Why is that? Uh, because there's not enough dark. Okay, and the paper is not that dark where the white charcoal is going to be so contrasty. So I'm putting a little bit more value down. Okay, over here. A little bit more value. And I'm going to start to add um, more dark down over here. And all of this should make that white charcoal pop more being very linear and I'm gonna add a turning plane actually I'm gonna keep that light and I want to make long pencil strokes pencil stroke direction is texture and these need to be long and straight because it's synthetic, so something that is synthetic needs to have straight lines. So this needs to be very straight over here. Come on down. Let's add a big shape in the middle, something substantial with a gradation from the bottom. Yeah, the white charcoal um, is just that little touch. Is losing an edge always necessary? No, it's not, but it, it helps to create depth in your drawings when you lose an edge, and it helps to create environment. A different way for me to say that is it helps to create an atmosphere because everything um, around me right now, some things are in the shadows and some things are in the light. So if I look across the room at my desk, underneath the desk where the chair is, a different desk, uh, the legs of the chair are getting lost in the shadow. And what does that create? It creates the environment of this room. So the answer to your question is no, you do not have to lose an edge. But if everything has a hard edge, that will make it look more two-dimensional, less three-dimensional, less environmental. Thank you, Richard. I really do appreciate that. I've been doing the, the, uh, the YouTube thing for many, many years. Uh, for many, many years also since I've been doing this so long. I didn't really take the YouTube thing seriously uh, because I was always so busy making lessons and courses for my website. And that's where most of my attention has gone. So I really do have 
hundreds and hundreds of videos on my website. I have hundreds of video on, videos on YouTube as well, but the videos on my website are much more structured lessons, much more in-depth teaching. It's like Anthony Ryder's stuff. You don't know why it pops so much, and it takes uh, a teacher to tell you he used white charcoal. Yeah, yeah, the white charcoal is just that little zing. It's like uh, if you have blueberry pie, it's great blueberry pie with whipped cream, even better. Okay, so the white charcoal is like that whipped cream. You really don't need it for the blueberry pie, but man, if it's on there, it's going to be even better. And it's just, um, it's just fun. Let, let's talk about texture with the orange. So uh, different textures are created through different pencil stroke direction. Different textures are created by different paintbrush stroke direction. So if I want a different texture on the orange... I'm just going to do a little stippling. Stippling is just going to be these little dots. I don't want to overkill it. I'm just going to suggest. So if you're drawing a brick building, you don't need to draw every brick. You just suggest some of them. And the viewer's eye will fill in the rest of the information. Uh, the glass jar, different texture. It needs to be longer stroke. I'm not doing stippling on the glass jar. I'm doing a longer, uh, flowier stroke. A little bit more in terms of straight lines. Now, whatever these reflections are, they could be the flower, but I don't think so. I don't know what they are. Um, they're these little linear things. They're kind of zigzaggy. So you got to have all different shapes in a still life to create interest. Let's go darker on the top. And let's go. Okay, so we're at almost an hour and 15 minutes. I think I'll take this a little bit longer for you guys. Does anybody else have any other questions about what I'm doing here today? Just a quick little sketch. Obviously, I would need a lot of time to make this thing work more. I think it works as a quick sketch. Now let's do the shadow side of the petals. Cast in a shadow a little bit. We could do reflections of the flower in the glass jar, and let's try to do that right now. Good. I definitely should do more still life stuff. It is fun. You know, I, I, I like it all. You know, my, my true love is figure drawing. Uh, that's my favorite. I love anatomy. I love trying to figure out, when I draw the figure, most of what I'm thinking about is what's under the skin. Is that where the deltoid is? Is that where the clavicle is? So that, that's the biggest challenge for me uh, is figure drawing. And I find that's what I love the most. But I, I really like everything. I, I mean, I do love landscape drawing. I don't do it that much, but I love it. And still life is just something that I used to do for book covers. Like there would be a still life, there'd be an object in the background. And it was just like, oh God, yeah, I got to do uh, the, I got to render the still life now, whether it's a lamp or uh, something like that. All right, cool, Julio. Reflections in the table. Uh, yeah, that would be a really nice uh option. So I don't know if I'm going to do that. Let's try. Let's just do a little downward pencil stroke. I don't want to do too much. Actually, I'm not going to do it because I'm going to start doing cross hatching. But the reflections, if you want that, it kind of looks like uh, a really old stainless steel tabletop or aluminum. That's okay, Ismael. Does it make it easier? I don't know what your question is. Okay. Uh, what else can I do to this thing? We definitely need more things to pop. 
So I, I, this isn't one of those where I'm, like I said, I'm not copying all of this. I'm just teaching you and having a little chat here about these still life topics, different techniques. Now, uh, do I want to use a ruler? No. Let's just make a nice dark edge. Should a Ling Yu, should I start with still life painting if I am totally new to painting? Uh, my recommendation is this, that if you're brand new to painting, start first with mono, a monochromatic palette. So you can do just the sepia tones. You can do something that's black and white. Um, and a simple still life would be great. So, but still lifes are hard. You know, if you're trying to paint like a coffee mug that's symmetrical, that's hard. You know, it, there's no place to hide with something like that. So pick, pick something like a, uh, that's not too complicated and paint it with a monochromatic palette and make sure it has one light source hidden it. Don't pick some photo that you find off of Google that has like a rim light, a, a third light, a fourth light. Uh, don't do that to yourself. Try to pick a really simplistic photo. Like this photo is actually a good one uh, to work from because you have different textures. You can paint the glass uh, jar translucent, thin paint. You can paint the orange with opaque paint. You can paint so many different things with this. I like pencil better than charcoal because I have a tremendous amount of very expensive camera equipment, computer equipment, and I do not want charcoal dust flying all over my studio. Um, so it's a practical decision for me. I feel like I have way more control with a pencil. I think charcoal, in my mind, was designed for working bigger and I work small. And the reason why I feel charcoal was designed for working bigger is because you can cover areas with it much quicker than you can with a pencil. So I love charcoal, I just don't use it for practical reasons. If my studio was quote unquote a real art studio without all this camera equipment and all this expensive computer stuff, Sure, I wouldn't care about messiness and I wouldn't care about charcoal. Uh, charcoal is cool and I, it's, it's, it's a good medium to use. It's just messy. I, I remember my old studio in my old home. I've, I've always worked, I've had studios that I've rented when I was younger, but I've really worked a lot in a home office. And I remember when I moved from my other house about uh, back in 2009, and we took everything out of the bedroom because my studio was right next to the bedroom, and my studio had a floor and the bedroom had a carpet. When we took everything out, I literally saw like a dark path on the carpet from charcoal and pencil dust uh, from the floor. And yeah, it 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 makes everything <laughs> kind of uh, have a layer of dark to it. Um, carpet everything. And even when I look up at my camera uh, that is above me, it has a layer of white, charcoal white pencil. Like I use, this is the charcoal that I use and I get a white layer of dust on everything. Uh, it's crazy. Um, so it's, it's messy. I, I, I think charcoal is great. And uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. So I can't wait to draw this. My very first drawing and paintings many years ago were still left. Yeah, this one's great. It's, it's so much fun. I'll work on it for a few more minutes for you guys. So here's a, a really good question. Um, well, let's see here. This isn't a question about your artwork, but it is a question about your experience with art. What other types of art do you enjoy drawing? Uh, for me, my passion is figure drawing both short duration gesture drawing as well as long duration studio figure drawings. That's what I like the most, okay? I, I get really invigorated when I draw the figure. I like talking with the figure when I draw 
them in the classroom when we're working one-on-one after class. A lot of my friends are life models. And so I, uh, that's what I like the most because I, I, I just love the challenge of it. Uh, I don't enjoy, enjoy drawing fabric because I painted book covers for 18 years and that's all you have on book covers is fabric shirt pants you know and and you're just rendering fabric for hours i I don't like doing that anymore Uh, so for me i just like portraits and the figure the most uh you know i love landscape but just don't have enough time to draw that stuff so that's what what i like i i mean i i literally have been doing this art thing for well over 30 years professionally and uh it's I just have so much artwork and I, I've gone through phases. Yeah. Um, now, I also have and I'll never be able to find it, which stinks. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, uh, Come on. Come on. There it is. Awesome. I found it. Sometimes I like just to have fun with the Faber Castell pit artist pen it's a white india ink waterproof so what we can do here with this is um have some fun with this as well even though i have the white charcoal on the paper already let's try this so i'm going to come on in with this thing and we can do some linear stuff not popping too much why is it not popping i don't have enough dark down we can do some things with the flower okay just this paper's not dark enough we could do linear stuff let's see how this works on the pencil ooh that's nice We can come on down and and just create different textures. I I need more pencil on the paper. We can do the texture with the orange. Different textures, different pencil stroke direction. It's like a mantra. So that's fun too. Let me see here. yeah, I, I mean, charcoal is, is messy. It can be controlled uh, because there's charcoal pencils, there's vine charcoal, which is the messiest, and then there's compressed charcoal. So it's, it's finding that right mix of those three. And then there's the, um, the pan pastels that Craig bought for me that are really, really awesome. Uh, and, and those are nice to use as well. There's uh, okay. So the question from Camillo is: uh, Is it easier to make a living with doing portraits or with the figure? So I that one. The answer to that question for me is hands down portrait. If you want to be a portrait painter, the chances of you earning a living doing portraits is so much higher than doing fine art, a figure drawing or figure painting stuff. Not everybody wants to have. Um, a nude hanging in their house. Uh, I My whole entire studio is nude drawings, but not everybody wants to have that in their house. And people want to have portraits of their loved ones. So that's a very easy one for me to answer. Portraits, you can earn a living doing portraits hand down. Hands down, the chances of you doing that are much higher than uh, figure. Figure is just something that you do to uh, sharpen your drawing skills and to get better and better and better because there's nothing harder to draw than the figure. I used to use Marie Ebony pencils all the time also. It was the the go-to pencil in art college. It's what I used for all four years of art college. And um, the problem that I find now with the Ebony pencils is that every time I go to sharpen them, they crack. Uh, And that's very frustrating. Like I, I, I recently, last semester, bought a bunch of Ebony pencils because I wanted to try to go back to them. And I'm like, let's let's try it. Let, let's go. I had success with them. And every one I purchased when I used a, a little sharpener like this, 
um, they cracked. And it was the most frustrating thing. It was, it was a huge waste of money. And so I don't use them for that reason, but they're good and they're really good on newsprint. I, I like them, but I just, I can't use them. You should, you should try to use them because they're really a good, good pencil. Let me just work on this for two more minutes and we'll call it a day. Yeah, I hate when that happens when they crack like that. Um, let's just put a little bit more tone down over here. Oh, you know what I forgot? Truffs didn't draw. We got to get Truffs. She's got to be doing her still life thing. She's not snoring. Let me just put a little bit more pencil down, just for fun. A little bit more. So we're just trying to create more middle tone. Gray date away. The orange is my least favorite part of this whole thing. Now, I'm going to do a little bit more dark here. So to make the jar shiny and reflective, there needs to be more dark. There's not enough dark. Therefore, it's not that reflective. So I'm just kind of making this up. I'm really not even looking so much at the photo reference. Just having fun. I just painted so many glass things in in the in back in the day that it's translucency with the paint and it's contrast so you gotta have the dark darks with something that is highly reflective yeah truffs is keeping a low profile today i'm gonna wake her up in a minute she's fine you know she's doing good she's just uh I don't, I don't want to curse, but she's just a son of a gun. And you'll replace that word. Okay, but she's a really good dog. Uh, she's, she's hooked on me right now. She goes back and forth between uh, my wife and me. And so right now she's addicted to me. She follows me everywhere, which is good. But it's also, I've, you ever been followed everywhere? It gets annoying after a while. <laughs> You're in the bathroom and she's trying to push open the door. And it's like, really, Trouts, can I just have one moment of privacy? Okay, so let's see. Let me just look at this. I don't love it. Uh, my famous last words, I don't love it. It needs more work, but we're an hour and a half in, and I got to put it to bed. Maybe I'll work on it a little bit after. Just doing texture in the background. Uh, modeling factors over here on the orange. So I'm going darker with the dark half tone, not the edge. To the edge, I should say. You are losing the age of the honey. Not sure what that means, but it sounded really good. It's a little bit more pencil on the paper. It's a little too light. Just texture. I'm scribbling right now, different pencil stroke directions. All of the weight of my arm is on the side of my hand, not the pencil point. Okay. A little bit more detail on this orange slice. Flowers, I'm kind of ignoring. Uh, so the question is, is it important when the background is a black shade to shade it a black tone? Uh, you, so I would use, say that a different way. Uh, are you going to match the values that you see on the photo reference, or are you going to change the values that you see on the photo reference. So in this particular case, I change the values uh, for practical reasons. For you to watch me shade this on YouTube 
would be the quickest way for you to go to sleep, okay? And I don't want to put you to sleep by you watching me shade this. And then the lesson was about the rhythm. So the rhythm is coming this way. Now, do I think it looks better all dark? Yeah, it looks great. The photo looks amazing. But I don't want to do all that shading for you here on um, YouTube. Uh, talking about the line level of the liquid. Oh, I didn't even see that. Let's 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 do that. Let's do that. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna put it right here. I didn't. Thank you. I didn't even notice that. So I kind of have an empty jar. So let's um, wrap around. Very light pressure on the pencil. And I'm going to go darker above the line of the liquid. Thank you so much. I didn't even, I didn't even think about this. Let's go darker above. Got some reflections right over there. And over here, we, we could go on this side. I'm going to try to do it with the white India ink thing. And let's come up right up the center so I can practice what I preach and do a top to bottom light and dark. That's okay. Julio, that was awesome. Thank you. I really do appreciate that. My English is not good e either. Trust me. My writing is horrendous. So you can show that there's liquid in that jar by just making the value slightly different on either end of the liquid line. And I would have liked to have made that a little bit rounder. It's a very hard line to draw. Um, and let's just, for argument's sake, let's play with the white. Okay. All right, Trust, you want to draw a little? <laughs> okay, let me go get Truffs, okay? Truffs, you want to draw? Come on. All right, it's Truff's time to draw. What do you think of the drawing so far, Truffs? What do you think? Can we switch it up a little bit, try to make it better a little bit? You want to put your hand in there? You're saying hello to your fans out there on YouTube land, in YouTube land. You're tired? You all right? You sad? You upset? Okay. Um, let's, let's draw a little bit, Truff. So let's, let's lean in and get into it a little bit. So you want a shade? You want more dark in the background? That seems to be the general consensus. So get that head in there, Truff. Come on. Get into it. Don't be lazy. Um, let's do a little shading over here. Okay, let's drop you down. What do you think, Truffs? Do you like the way that's coming out? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you want to go back to bed, Truffs? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the still life? Is it all right? Okay, that's what you think about it. All right. Let's say goodbye, Truffs, okay? All right. All right, guys, so I want to thank you so much for joining me. I, I feel like I could keep working on this thing for like another three hours. Uh, this was fun. It was different, something different. So let, let's do a quick little recap, okay? Uh, so here's, I uh, just broke that pencil. So number one, anything you draw, please take the time to pick really, really good photo reference, okay? This, I got lucky. Sometimes you you get lucky and sometimes you struggle to find good photo reference that you connect with. 
I, I guess the photo reference gods were with me this morning because I just typed in still life and I, and I found this, okay? Um, yeah, and uh, so always start from good photo reference or if you set a still life up in your home to draw from life, uh, make sure you have diverse objects. Make sure you arrange them in a pleasing way. Make sure you don't have any tangents where edges touch. Make sure you have overlap. Okay. And uh, the most important thing, thank you, Julio. Appreciate that, man. Uh, the most important thing, I'm going to listen to some Santana after this. Uh, you got to listen to the Santana uh, from 1969 or 68 Woodstock. Oh my God, it's like the best. It's, it's on YouTube. It's the best. Uh, if you need energy, you watch that. The guys with the bongos and so I can watch that all day. Um, and that's what I'm going to watch next as I, as I work on something else. Um, and uh, yes, light and shade is the magic that you need to make your still lifes um, interesting, okay? And have form and volume and all of that stuff. And then play with uh, composing, with the center line, with your background value, with the three values. Uh, use line and tone. Um, you know, do what do what you like. If you just like line and you think line is great, then just use line. If if you're more of the atelier academic style artist, well then screw the t a line and just use the tone. Uh, you know, r rules were meant to be broken, and the more rules, you know, I say this to myself because I'm a, I'm very a rule driven. The more rules I give to myself, the more unhappy I am. So rules were meant to be broken and uh, rules are good when you're learning, but then you can manipulate and do all those different things. So I, I could keep going with the recap, but I think you guys got it. I want to thank you so much for joining me here on this holiday weekend. Um, Sandy, thank you so much. Yeah, the, it's on um, YouTube and it's Santana. If you just type in Santana Woodstock and it's such a fast song, it's so cool. And everyone's smiling and having a really good time. Uh, so I love watching that. Thank you, Padam, for watching. Ely Flow OWO, thank you so much for watching. Ileana, thank you. I really appreciate it. Ileana, you're doing great. Keep up the good work. Uh, I might film the critiques on Tuesday because of Labor Day on Monday. Thank you, though. Sabi, thank you. Thank you, thank you for watching. Julio. Awesome, man. Ash, appreciate you stopping by. Kai Hatcher, love it. Thanks for stopping by. Aura, thank you. Jill, I appreciate you watching today. Give the video a thumbs up, guys. Uh, subscribe to the channel so you get uh, the notifications when I post. Click on the little bell. You got to do that YouTube thing. Uh, Camillo, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Joseph, I appreciate you. Nancy, have a great Labor Day. Appreciate you joining us here today. Frankie J, I'm going to be down there in Wheeling, West Virginia, and we're going to um, have a good time with some whiskey. We're going to do a whiskey run, and uh, yeah, in a, in a 32 Ford or something like that. That would be so awesome. Phoenix, appreciate you stopping by and watching. We're going to do a shine run. That would be so much fun, like going sideways on those back roads. <laughs> I'm all over the place today. Um, all right, guys. Diego. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's important to be self-critical to a point, but don't overdo it because the artist's ego is a very sensitive thing. Yeah, come back next week, Diego. A ask me that question early on in the stream, okay, so I can help you with that. I'll be doing another, I should be doing another live stream next Saturday, although we're having people from out of state. I'll have to see. Um, come over. The cats, say hello, Marie. Joyce, thank you so much for, for joining us. I appreciate you. Joyce Smith. Bye. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. Yeah, ask that question next week, Diego, okay? In one paragraph. All right, see you guys.